this is Myrtle Pettit from Kitchen Gardens. And we're so happy to have a special guest here in New York. And she came all the way from Australia. She's no other than Miss Barbara O'Neill. Glad to have you. It's good to be here. <laughs> yes, and we would like to ask you some questions if that's okay. Certainly. So here's our top 10 questions with Miss Barbara O'Neill. First is, what are the top three questions you usually get from people around the world? Well, um, people want to live longer, mm -hmm. but they not only want to live longer, they want to live healthier. So that's one question. Another question is, uh, what are some shortcuts? <laughs> <laughs> and the other probably most common question is, what do we eat? Yes, and what is our second question is, what um, advice do you usually give them? For the second question, what was the second question? Recapping that in my mind. So first question is, um, how can we live longer? Uh, the shortcuts. The shortcuts. Is the second question. So what I usually do is say, you've got you to eat simply. Yes. Um, not complicated. Okay. In fact, one lady said, how can we feed you? I said, it's really easy. Fruits and vegetables, sure. fast food. Yes, going back to the basics. Going back to the <laughs> basics. Um, if it's cooked, just cooked simply and quickly, except for potatoes and sweet potatoes, okay. of course, which need a nice long cooking. Also, crock pots are great because um, your protein is very important. That's right. um, so putting them in the crock pot. Uh, that's another shortcut and your nuts and seeds they're always available important yes. um, grains and sorry they're important uh, proteins but also I encourage people to um, to get different grains and you can get some very nice grains today and we actually have ancient grains now available in the market that's true that's true that's true all right, our uh, third question is how to strike a balance between high protein and low protein consumption? Because sometimes people take too much protein, other people take um, too, uh, you know, low protein. Not enough, yeah. Yes. Do you know, it's difficult to over to vegetarian protein, and there's a big difference between vegetarian protein and animal protein. And the book, in the book, The China Study, Dr. Colin Campbell, he shows that very clearly, the, the difference between the two. The only way you can really overdo vegetarian protein is if you live on lentils, nuts, and seeds. And I don't know anyone that does that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Food combining is always a topic that people are interested about. So what is your opinion on the matter? Well, there is a lot of talk about combining protein and carbohydrates. The only time that is really a problem is with animal protein and carbohydrates. But with vegetarian protein, um, in the food itself, it's a combination of carbohydrates and protein, yeah. as in your nuts, seeds, legumes, grains. Uh, so that's, that's the only really problem with, uh, with the carbohydrate protein yeah. issue. The only thing I, I put a word of caution on is mixing fruits it's and vegetables, vegetables together. Okay. So I, we usually have a vegetable meal and we usually have a fruit meal. How about like in terms of smoothie and juicing? That's a good question. In, see, there are some vegetables that are classed probably a little bit different, and that okay. is the leaves. So a lot of people that have smoothies will make their smoothie with protein, coconut, uh, yes. berries or <laughs> bananas and fruit, mm -hmm. and then they'll put leaves in. Well, leaves are considered a herb. Okay. So leaves can actually go either way. Either way, and all it, right, that it, makes it clear. <laughs> yeah, it does make it clear. And, and then the question comes up, what about juicing? Yes. Like in a carrot, sorry, an apple juice, yes. that is fruit and veggies together. Well, because digestion isn't happening, it, okay. it, it's not a problem. Yeah, because it's in a form of a juice. That's right, that's all right. right. Uh, that's a very good answer, thank you so much. You've talked about uh, the dangers of wheat. Um, can we still use a wheat grass? <laughs> <laughs> wheat grass is perfectly fine because it's the grass. So the problem with wheat today, and you can search this out in the book uh, Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis. Yes. He does a very good job at showing why the wheat's a problem. It went through intensive crossbreeding in the 50s. Yeah. And what that did was that changed the grain. Yeah. 
-hmm. It changed the structure of the starches and the glutens in the grain. Okay. But in the wheat grass, you're just eating the grass. So wheat grass, not a problem. All right. So it's like considered a vegetable almost. That's right. Yes. Or a leaf. Oh, a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how about soy? Because usually um, vegetarians eat a lot of soy beans and soy products. So can we still eat it? Well, um, a friend of mine did a thesis on soy. Wow. And she's got a very quick answer to the soy <laughs> problem. She said, very easy. God made it good. Man mucked it up. Oh. <laughs> so Summed if you if you can get the whole soy that has not yes. been genetically modified, not grown with um, right. chemicals, that soy is safe. Wonderful. So we can still eat soy as long as it's organic and non-GMO. That's right. <laughs> A lot of people are suffering from yeast overgrowth or candidiasis, and what advice can you give them? I've actually written a book on the subject. Wonderful. Uh, and in that book, I go through the history of yeast fungus. I look at how it can get into the body, and there are some specific okay. programs. But in a nutshell, it loves sugars. It loves yeast. So okay. you've got you to get the fruit intake really, really low down to low glycemic fruits, lots of vegetables and no yeasts. Yes. And you've really got to check the house that there's no mould in the house. Right. So can you um, tell us your book? My book is called Self Heal by Design and it's basically the role of microorganisms or the true role of microorganisms in disease. Unfortunately today they're blamed as the problem but what mm. I look at is why they are around. And as, as I explain it, you see that microorganisms play a very important role in the life cycle on planet Earth, in the life cycle in the human body. And so when they're out of control, we need to look at why they're out of control and how yes. we can bring the balance back. Wonderful. So we'll put the link below so you can click it and get a copy of that book. And what is your recommendation to women who has abnormal pap? results. Okay, abnormal pap results are sometimes that can be a hormonal imbalance has right. contributed to that and the pill is one of the biggest culprits for that mm -hmm. and to search out that um, you can put Barbara O'Neill into YouTube hormones and you'll get an hour lecture will explain right. why and how the hormones go out right. and how you can get the balance back but there is a herb mix that a woman can douche with and I've seen many women uh, conquer their abnormal cells mm. and it's uh, a herb called poke root and a herb called golden seal. So both these herbs need to be boiled and then the woman douches with that. So it's that simple. <laughs> wow, thank you so much for sharing that. And oh, how about on women um, taking HRT? Women taking HRT, it's been well proven since about 2000 mm -hmm. that there's a, there's a big danger in HRT because uh, the pill is synthetic hormones, which yes. throws the balance out, and HRT is more synthetic hormones. So it's not healing a hormonal imbalance. It can actually exasperate the whole problem, even though it may reduce some of the symptoms. Yeah. So I don't advise uh, hormone replacement therapy. So is there any other option for women who are... Yes, going? there certainly is, is, uh, is an option. Mm -hmm. And that same uh, lecture that I just advised, um, uh, hormones. hormones, balancing hormones. the hormones, yeah. So you, you can uh, see that. It's about a 50-minute uh, presentation wow, so which shows why the hormones are out <laughs> and how you can get them back into balance. So check that out. <laughs> So finally, um, kindly leave um, a nugget of wisdom to people who are trying to get better and just trying to maintain their health. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. Um, you can get all my lectures on YouTube, so Barbara yes. and Neil, and I'll look at them in detail. But basically, it's really uh, what we've all always known and most mm -hmm. of us are hoping for a quicker fix, and that That's is true. go to bed early. <laughs> Drink at least two quarts of water a day. Uh, exercise every day. And on my DVDs, my lectures, I show you, you can just be a little nugget of interval training. Eat food in its natural state as much as possible. I aim for 50 raw, 50 cooked, because raw food will deliver what cooked won't. And cooked mm -hmm. food breaks down certain nutrients in the food, making them more available for you. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, you know, some people might eat more raw and go well with that mm -hmm. and some people might eat a little bit more cooked if someone's got a very irritated gut. So, But basically 50-50 mm -hmm. I, I aim for. So, yep, exercise, early nights, water and also uh, trust in divine power. <laughs> now, trusting in God takes away the, the stress. It doesn't mean you're not going to have stress in your life but you've got a, you've got a friend in Jesus. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. And I hope you've learned a lot from those questions and will apply it to your lives. Thank you so much and good day. Mm -hmm.